everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my kitchen. We haven't been here for quite a while um, doing any baking. I haven't done any baking in a while and today I really wanted to make my dad a really cool birthday cake. It's his birthday tomorrow. So I thought that instead of just making it and then filming another video, I'd just film a baking video for you guys. Hopefully this cake is going to be pretty cool when it's done, but it's the first time I've made one kind of like this, so we'll just have to see how it goes. As always when I'm downstairs, I do apologise for any noise or scratching noises or anything that you hear. The dogs around here, we've got hard floors and they do get noisy when I'm baking and things, so they do wander around. So the cake that I'm making for my dad has loads of different elements to it. Um, I'm hoping to make a piñata cake, which has like the drizzle on the outside. Um, so it's going to be like kind of a, what's classed as a naked cake with the drizzle but piñata in the inside. Um, so because there's kind of so many things going on with it, the actual cake that I'm baking is just a really standard Victoria sponge cake. So I'm taking the recipe from Tanya Bakes, as always, you know this is my go-to baking book, um, but it is just a really bog standard Victoria sponge cake. Um, so this is what it is. I'm obviously not going to do the filling or the toppings or anything on this, it's just for the sponge. So for the sponge, um, you need 225 grams of unsalted butter, 225 grams of caster sugar, four eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, 225 grams of self-raising flour, and one teaspoon of baking powder. You're also supposed to put a little pinch of salt in, but I've actually had to use a little bit of salted butter to kind of compensate for my baking butter. So I'm not gonna put any salt in just because it's already in that little bit of butter that I've put in. So the first thing that you need to do is cream together the butter and the sugar. So I've already got my butter measured out into my mixing bowl. As I said, there's a little bit of salted butter in there as well, which is why I'm gonna ignore putting salt in later. And then I've got my 225 grams of caster sugar measured out in this bowl. So I'm just gonna pop this in. And then seeing as my arm was aching like hell when I used to have to do it with like a wooden spoon, I treated myself for my birthday and I got myself an electric whisk. What a grandma thing to buy yourself for your birthday. Um, but yeah, basically you just want to cream these together until it's light and fluffy. So I'm going to do that with the whisk, which shouldn't take as long as it used to do with the wooden spoon. Now I would say that that is light and fluffy. It no longer looks like really orange, yellow, whatever colour it is, butter. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say that that's done. So the next step is to whisk in your eggs and the vanilla extract. So I'm gonna do that again with the electric whisk. So I'm gonna pop my eggs in first um, and then just add that vanilla extract and then whisk it all together. So it's four eggs which I've got on here and I'm just gonna break all those in. I've got batter on me already. So that's my four eggs in. It's now time to put the vanilla extract in. It's a teaspoon of this. Now I don't really measure out vanilla extract, I just pop it in so that's all I'm gonna do. And then now that we've got all that in, I'm just gonna whisk that all together again. So that's all combined now. It's a lot runnier than it was when I last showed you because obviously it's got the eggs in there. So now it's time to add the rest of your dry ingredients. So it's 225 grams of self-raising flour, which I have here, and then a teaspoon of baking powder. Now it doesn't say to sieve these in, but I hate it when I'm mixing and there's lumps in there. So I'm gonna sieve this in and then mix it together using a wooden spoon rather than the electric whisk. I'm gonna pop the flour in first. And then I've got my baking powder here and I'm just gonna grab a teaspoon of this. So now that's all in, I'm gonna grab my wooden spoon and get all that mixed together. And then that's pretty much the batter done. Um, so fingers crossed that this looks okay when it's all mixed together. that's all combined it's a lot firmer again now I can lift it up without it kind of dropping out it's so much easier doing it with the whisk I don't know how I used to do it with like just a wooden spoon so now this is all combined I'm gonna get that popped into my what are they called my tins yeah cake tins I'm gonna put them into my cake tins there we go and um, I've got three cake tins just because I'm doing this as a piñata cake and I want to completely hollow out one of the middle ones and then like carve into two of the others. So I'm doing it in three, I'm hoping this stretches for three, but they are quite shallow tins, they're not quite, they're not like big deep ones. So I'm gonna pour this in and then I'm gonna pop that in the oven. So 
that's all my cake tins filled. I'm now gonna pop this in the oven, which I've had preheating at 180 degrees. It goes in the oven for 25 minutes. So until the cakes have risen and are like lightly brown and bouncy when you like tap the top. So I'm gonna pop these in and then while they're in the oven, I'm gonna tidy up this mess of a kitchen um, and I'll come back to you once they've baked. So my cake's now out of the oven. They were in for like 26 minutes. They're all lovely and risen. They're pulling away from the edges, which is perfect because it's a little bit easier to get out the tins. And yeah, I'm just gonna leave them to cool now for quite a while. I think I might nip out and do some of the jobs I need to do while they're cooling. So they're gonna be cooling for at least an hour before I then start to kind of carve everything, put everything in and ice them, etc. Um, I also need to run out and get some cream because I didn't know you needed cream for ganache, which is stupid because it doesn't make sense. So it's been about an hour or so now. My cakes are pretty much completely cold, um, but I've still got all of the icing and everything to make, so I'm gonna leave them on the wire racks for a little bit longer, but I'm gonna get cracking on the icing that we're making. So I'm just making a standard, I think it's like a chocolate buttercream icing. Again, I'm using tiny bits for this recipe. I'm using the bit from the celebration cake for the icing and the ganache, just so I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, so I'm gonna get the cake completely iced um, and stuffed and everything. And then I'm gonna go on to make the ganache and do all the decorations and everything. So I've just melted some chocolate as it's told me to do. Um, so it said 100 grams, I've done 150, but it's all smooth and melted in there. That's gonna go into the buttercream icing once I've kind of done everything else. So the first thing that it says to do is to cream my butter. Now I've got 300 grams of butter. Yeah. I've got 300 grams of butter here, and then in this mound here that you can see, this is 450 grams of icing sugar and 50 grams of cocoa powder. I just piled it all up in one because I didn't see the point in doing two. So what you do is you cream this so it's all nice and fluffy, add that in little bits at a time till it's all incorporated, and then pour this melted chocolate in. So I'm gonna do that. I've got, you can't see him, but I've got a little helper just sat next to me. Can you hear him? So I'm gonna get this done. Um, and I'll show you what it's like when I've it finished. So that is the base of the icing mixed up. It doesn't look very brown from that far away. There we go. It's quite pale. Um, I'm assuming that this melted chocolate is going to make it darker. So I'm going to pour this in and then I'm going to just mix it with a spoon rather than the mixer. Um, there we go. Oh, that's so satisfying to watch. I don't even know if you can see it from up there. But it's satisfying. So yeah, now that's all in, I'm just going to mix it up with a spoon. So there we go, that's all incorporated now. I don't think it looks that much different to you guys, but it's all in there. So now I've done that, I'm gonna get the cakes cut and put on a plate. I'm gonna try and move you a little bit closer for like the next few bits, seeing as you can't see too much. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so for the next few shots and things, you're not gonna see me because I kinda wanna focus on the cake. So I'm just gonna talk as I'm doing it. So I've got my thinnest cake here as the bottom piece. Um, I'm then gonna cut, I've got this thicker one, I'm gonna cut a big circle in the middle and then I'm gonna pop that on the top and cut some more out of this one because obviously this is a piñata cake so I wanna make sure that there's enough room to kind of get loads in. So I'll just grab a knife. Okay, so I've got my cake with the big hole in now. So that's gonna sit on there like that and I'm gonna pop all the Maltesers in the middle. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little bit out of this middle one as well, the bottom one, sorry, as well. Just so that there's a little bit more room for it. So I'm just gonna cut where I've already got this circle. There we go, so that's those two with a nice big hole in the middle there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ice around the edges of the bottom piece so that I can stick this one on the top. So I'm just gonna grab my icing and pop it on like this. Now it just needs to be really rough because obviously this is just the inside bit. So I'm just gonna use the spoon that I mixed the chocolate in with. There we go, so we've got the rough icing on there. I'm just gonna pop the cake on top now. So there we go, that's all stuck now. And I've got a nice big hole there to get everything in. So what I'm gonna do, before I do anything else, because this next piece of cake is like the top piece, there's no hole in this, I'm gonna pour all of the Maltesers into the middle. So I've got this big bag of sharing Maltesers. Now I don't wanna use all of them, because I do want some for the top, but it just depends how many like fill it. There we go, so that is nice and full of Maltesers now. And I'm just gonna pop some icing on. Again, I'm just gonna go around the edges because I don't wanna get icing on the Maltesers, really. So go around the edges. Again, it doesn't need to be neat. This is just so that I can get this other cake stuck on. And then it's gonna be around the edges that need to be a little bit neater. 
I don't know if you can, well I don't, I know you can't see, but just down here there is a dog that just keeps pouring my feet because he's like, I want the cake. There we go, so we've got icing on the top there, and I'm going to flip this cake over and just pop it on the top. Oh, I'm so excited, my first piñata cake is going well so far. So, that's that, that's all stuffed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck all of this icing, although there seems to be a lot of it, um, I'm going to pop this on the top and then I'm going to smooth it down the sides just so that the whole thing is covered. There we go, so that's my cake completely iced all the way around. Now in hindsight I should have done this as a 40 year cake because I have so much icing left. There is still a lot of icing there so in hindsight I should have done 40 year but these are the things we learn. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the ganache but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that off camera because I've never made it before and there is pressure that you don't believe when there's a camera filming. So I'm going to make the ganache and then come back to you hopefully when that's gone to plan. So I will see you very soon. Okay so we're back, my ganache has cooled, it went to plan which is amazing. Um, so what I've got is in this cup here I've got my ganache in the piping bag, I've left it to cool a little bit as well. I've got my cake here, I've cleaned up the plate so it's a little bit kind of tidier and then I've got all of the things that I'm going to pop on my cake. So here I've got two, when it wants to focus, I've got two toffee crisp cup, this is a Kit Kat peanut butter. I've got the rest of the M&Ms that weren't inside the cake, some golden eggs, the rest of the toffee crisps and then I've got some milky bar and Oreo as well just in case I decide to pop those on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the ganache on the cake and then I'm going to decorate it. Again, you're not going to see my face for this but I'm just going to leave it as the cake um, so I'll try to get a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything on here now and kind of just see how it goes. There you go, so I've got my ganache in here. Um, it is still quite warm but it's not like really really hot or anything so I'm going to chop the end. This is literally just a plastic bag that it's in. Um, I don't see the point in spending loads of money on piping bags, especially reusable ones, when you can just use plastic bags for things like this. Right, so so far I've only got a couple of drips going on, so I'm going to leave that for a couple of seconds. It's these two. <laughs> Um, I'm going to leave that for a couple of seconds and kind of see what else drips down. Got like this one here that's nearly going. Right, okay, so nothing else has dripped down yet. Like I've got this big bit here which is kind of going a little bit. So I'm just going to drizzle a little bit more around the outside in hopes that I can kind of coax a few more drips out of it. Right, so there we go. We've got my cake and it's got some drips on. It's not the best. I mean, this side here isn't too great. But for my first attempt, I think it's pretty good. So the side that I'm going to use as the front is this bit here. So I'm going to start adding everything in. Now I did only get one of the Kit Kat peanut butters, so I'm going to make that like the main bit of it, I guess. And I'm hoping the ganache is cold enough that everything's going to stay in place a little bit, but we'll just have to see. So that's all of the big bits in. Now I'm going to pop all of these bits on. So I've got some M&Ms. More than I thought I had as well, actually. So I'm just going to dot these around. That's the M&M's on, and now I'm going to pop some of the golden eggs on, because these look really cool. And there we go, that is my finished cake. I'm so happy with how this has turned out. It's not like the best one ever, and you're definitely going to have seen better. But for my first attempt, I'm so happy with that. Like, look at it. It's so cool. So that's everything for my video this week. I hope you enjoyed watching, and watching me make this big, giant cake that... It's probably going to make us all feel sick because there's so much chocolate. But it looks really good. I'm so happy with it. There's so much room for improvement. But for a first try, I am really, really happy. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you'd like me to do more baking videos. I do really, really enjoy baking. So I'd love to kind of do more and film more for you guys. So do let me know if you enjoy them. Also subscribe if you're new. And I will see you next week with a new video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.